Hi everybody, Adam here. Welcome back to our Lego room. In today's Lego room update video, we've got a ton of great stuff to talk about. I have been making a number of changes to the layout of the Lego room, uh, mostly focused around organization and displaying of finished builds. So really excited about the progress there. We'll talk through that a bit. I've also been working on a number of modules for an upcoming train show. So we will give a sneak peek of those and talk a little bit about where we're going with that. And there'll be some follow-up videos going into more detail, so keep an eye out for that. And I just recently got back from Brick Fair, Virginia 2022, as well as the National Model Railroad Association Convention and their National Train Show in St. Louis. Had an amazing time on that trip and saw a lot of cool stuff. We've already put a few videos up on the channel from that trip and there'll be uh, several more coming out over the, the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for those. But as part of that trip, I was able to pick up a number of really uh, cool, amazing things. So we will take a look at those and talk through some of the interesting items that I picked up and, uh, you know, lots of other things to cover. So let's dive in and get started. So let's start out by taking a look at a few of the items that I picked up while I was away on my trip. First off, we've got some items from Brick Fair, Virginia, and I was really excited to pick up these two great ball contraption kits. Uh, one of them is from 2021, and the other one is from the you know this year, 2022. And it's always really exciting when I can pick up these cool great ball contraption kits. It's interesting to see the parts usage and the design of some of these different modules and really excited to to build these this one right here is a sweeper module uh, consists of 320 parts and the other one is a stepper v2 uh, with 404 parts so keep an eye out for videos up on the channel soon with uh, these finished builds. And we're starting to get quite a few modules here. So we're gonna have to set out a bigger display area for our GBC modules so that we can have a nice, nice loop that we can run through. But really excited about both of those. They include the, the motors as well. The 2021 version has uh, the power functions uh, motor and I believe they've gone with a third party motor for uh, this year's kit due to just how hard it is these days to uh, how hard and how expensive it is to get uh, power functions motors so be interested to try both of those out and see how they work now in addition to that I was able to go to the Brick Mania Capital Store and pick up these store exclusive minifigures. Uh, always excited about the look and quality of Brick Mania uh, figures and these two look really well done. Uh, Landon always does an amazing job with these. So I was glad to be able to visit the store which is actually conveniently right beside the Expo Center. Uh, so it was really easy to pop in there and see all of the amazing stuff that they had for sale. So we'll talk more about these figures on the channel. But, you know, I was super happy about being able to, to pick those up while I was there. Uh, I also got a Lego City poly bag here that came in my, uh, my goodie bag, as well as a few bricks. Uh, we've got a nice Brick Fair pen, which we can see there. It's a nice pen. And then we've got the Brick Fair 2022 brick and the recognized AFOL networking event 2022 brick. 
and a nice roadwork head tile and a brick fair lane street sign tile. Really excited about that. I think we need to figure out a good way to get some of these street signs that we have in our collection up on some of the street corners in the city. So keep an eye out for that in an upcoming video. I think they should look, uh, you know, they should add a lot to the city and will look really cool. And then a few uh, orange hearts as well. So some really nice things from, from Brick Fair. I've got a couple more here that we can take a look at. Now, I didn't pick up as many sets uh, from the convention this time around. I was trying to uh, keep what I picked up to a size that would fit in my carry-on luggage because I'd heard a lot of things about people losing luggage on connecting flights at the moment uh, with all the travel craziness going on. Uh, so I just picked up a few Bionicle sets uh, for my son who's a huge Bionicle fan. So we've got the, the tin here, which has got uh, Lego 8592, a uh, nice one there. And we've got uh, the, which one is this? Bi uh, Bionicle Lego 8994. Really like the looks of this one. Uh, it's kind of like a chariot-esque look with the, the animals out front pulling the, um, the wagon. Uh, with the guy riding on it so really cool looking sets should be a lot of fun to build and we'll show those finished builds later on the channel one other thing that i picked up uh, was a cool looking bionicle mask from red star games now this is not a lego bionicle piece this is something that they've designed and 3d printed and painted so interested to see how it works and looks on a figure uh, but you know the my initial view of it is that uh, it should be should work quite well and it uh, has a nice interesting shape to it so really curious to try it out and we'll talk more about that in an upcoming video on the channel but uh, nice work by red star games and i was uh, happy to to pick up one of those to try out and see see just how it worked and the you know see the sort of the craftsmanship and how they uh, how they've put that together so you know a few nice things here it uh and quite happy with what i picked up from brick fair virginia uh, especially those gbc modules i think they're going to uh, be a lot of fun and should be great additions to our gbc layout but Definitely some cool, some cool items. Now let's take a look at the items I picked up while I was at the National Model Railroad Association convention and show. Now, one of my reasons for going to the NMRA convention and train show was the fact that there was going to be an lego lgms layout on uh, on display at the national train show and as part of the the convention uh, sort of leading up to the convention brick model railroader released a pre-order for a st louis refrigerator car company uh train car premium instruction set and really excited about this i was able to pick up my pre-order at the train show and it looks awesome. I've got a couple of sets of printed bricks in there and we will be working on starting to assemble these train cars. So keep an eye out on the channel. I'll do a video sort of looking at the interior of this box and all the, the goodies that came with it. Uh, but quite excited about this. I think it should look awesome around the, the layout and I think it was a, a cool and interesting idea that Kale did uh, in conjunction with, uh, with you know, Gateway 2022 in St. Louis for the NMRA. And, uh, you know, I hope that they do more special kits like that in the future. Now, while I was at the convention part of the, uh, the week, I attended a number of different uh, talks and clinics that were 
quite interesting, learned a lot, and we'll be talking about some of those over the next little while on the channel. But one of the ones that I went to was talking about the railroad history in St. Louis. And I was able to pick up this excellent book uh, by Molly Butterworth, who gave the, the talk. And, you know, I think that this is going to be an interesting read and will definitely give us some inspiration for upcoming builds and things that we do around the layout. And I'll talk more about this book because it's so much jam packed in here. So many great pictures. Uh, it definitely deserves, uh, you know, a little bit more time and video space to, to look at and talk about, but really excited about that book and that I was able to, to pick that up on the trip. Now I also got this nice gateway pin and I got this really cool, uh, terminal railroad association coin. As part of my week there in St. Louis, I was able to go on a tour of the Madison train yard, which is the, the main rail yard for Terminal Railroad. Uh, it was really a lot of fun. I've got a whole bunch of videos from my time there uh, that I will post up on the channel. And this coin is uh, reflective and sort of commemorative of the Merchant's Bridge project. They've been replacing the whole Merchant's Bridge and they're getting very close to finishing that. Uh, so this was a, a really nice, really nice sort of commemorative coin to get uh, to remember the uh, that tour by. So quite happy with that and a nice addition to our collection. We'll have to find a nice place to display that. And then last but not least, as part of my convention package, I picked up this uh, cool looking HO scale uh, train car here for the Missouri Public Service Company. Really like the, the little mascot image on there. I don't have a model railroad uh, layout at the moment but this car will be up on our shelf, uh, you know, as a nice display item. And, you know, at some point maybe we'll have a, an HO scale layout that we can, uh, we can try it out on. But, you know, overall had an amazing time at the NMRA convention and the National Train Show. And as I mentioned, you know, there was a number of excellent talks that I went to. I saw a lot of really interesting layouts. So definitely keep an eye out for videos talking more about my time there and, uh, you know, showing some of the awesome things that I saw uh, on the channel in the, the coming days and weeks ahead. Now, as I mentioned, I've been making a number of changes to the layout of the Lego room for both organizational purposes and to improve how we're displaying some of our finished builds. In addition to that, I'm also looking at the possibility of expanding out the space that we have for the layout and for the trains that we want to run around the, the room in general. So you can see over there, I've taken out a couple of the bookcases that were in that corner and I've started to put up a few posters as well on the wall over there. So taking a closer look here, you can see that one of the posters I've put up is of a ton of amazing steam locomotives. I'm a really big train fan in general and I think this is a nice addition to the the lego room and you know give some great inspiration for potential future trains that we might want to uh, have in lego form running around our layout and this was a poster that i picked up probably three ish years ago when i was in portland for bricks cascade and you know i've never had it up on the wall so it seemed like a good time to to get it, you know, nicely framed and displayed so that we can really appreciate uh, all the all the great trains on there. 
Now, in addition to this train poster, I also have a number of Lego posters. So we've got the poster of Lucy here. And then we've got, you know, a Lego Movie 2, a Ninjago one. Nice to just get uh, some more Lego focused uh, artwork and posters up on the wall. So this is on the entryway into uh, where I do my filming and a lot of my building. And on the opposite wall from that, I've got a cool looking Lego Star Wars poster as well as the Ghostbusters Afterlife uh, VIP poster uh, that I picked up a while ago. So nice to just get all of these up on the wall. I think they add a lot to the uh, sort of overall look of the room. And, you know, for the most part, that was wall space that I was not using. And I think this is a good use for it. So quite happy with those additions. Now, heading into the room where I do uh, a lot of my filming and building. So you can see here that I've got my two Hulkbuster VIP posters up on the wall framed. And then I've got a Captain Marvel framed picture. And then the other one is an Transcontinental Railway anniversary stamps that are framed. So nice additions to the wall in here, I think. And, you know, continues that theme of, you know, displaying some of these train and Lego related posters, pictures, you know, and various paraphernalia up on the walls where we can really appreciate them. Now, moving over from those framed uh, images on the wall there, I've got my table where I do a lot of my filming, building, uh, writing for the you know, adamsbrickjunction.com. Really like that table space and how the lights work there. But above that used to be just empty space. So now what I've done is I've got couple of shelves up there so that I can start to display more of the finished builds that we have. You can see there it's a great spot for Pikachu. Uh, really happy to have him up there. We've got the the Lego Thor's hammer and then I've started to put the uh, the Lego helmet collection I guess you would call it up there. I've still got several that I'm going to to build and once those boxes are done the finished model will live there. But I think that's an overall nice look for that part of the room. And then you can see the second shelf there. I'm starting to put a number of the vehicle builds uh, up on that shelf. So I think that should be really nice. And if we carry around the corner here you'll see that I've added one of those bookcases that I took out of the main Lego room into this space. And, you know, one, it's a nice way to display things in this corner of the room, but it also allowed me to sort of consolidate all of my Lego books and magazines, as well as train books and magazines in one place that's easily accessible when I'm building and doing various projects at the desk here. So really happy with that change there. And I think the, you know, we've got the Nintendo shelf there uh, displaying the Bricker builds uh, mushroom and then the, the Lego Nintendo sets there. And then we've got a few other sets up on that shelf. And then on the top there, I've got the, the Bricker builds Babam. Uh, build which is I'm about halfway through so we'll be finishing that up but I think that'll be a nice space and then I've got you know a lot of empty space continuing along here where I can have the the Charmander build from Bricker builds and some of the other nice really large scale uh, builds from Bricker builds on display in a you know uh, a way that I can appreciate them in the in the space uh, but they've got, you know, uh, sort of the proper space they need for, for display purposes. So really happy with these changes. 
Uh, number of changes as well on the other side of the room that I'm helping my son with for his uh, Lego display. That's a little bit more of a work in progress, but uh, really happy with these changes here for for my portion of the room. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to uh, really improve things from both a display standpoint as well as from an accessibility standpoint for all the, the magazines and books that I reference uh, when I'm writing stuff or doing builds. So really happy overall with this portion of the, the change that I've been doing in the Lego room. Now, looking at the Lego storage portion of the Lego room, you'll notice a couple of things over here. First off, I've put my Brick Model Railroader premium instruction boxes up on top of the Acro Mills containers. This is for a couple reasons. One, I think it's nice to be able to appreciate the great artwork on those boxes. This is a nice way to be able to do that. I don't think this is the final place that they will stay because I've got some projects in mind for the upper portion of this part of the room and the Lego room in general, but it moves them up off the ground for now where, you know, I'm, they were previously sitting under the layout tables and I'm trying to clear that out a bit for some other projects I have in mind. So this is a nice way to have them up and out of the way appreciate the the art on them and you know we'll keep thinking about a, a final or a more final and permanent display solution for them going forward but you know a really nice spot for them in the time uh, for the time being now the other thing that i've been working on over here is really trying to organize out the bins and stuff that i have on the floor over here it was getting to be a bit of a uh, an impassable walkway to to get over here just due to you know things that were mostly sorted but not necessarily you know having a home in the uh, in the wall storage so i've been doing a pass on you know getting things off the floor and into uh, into the acro mills containers on the wall and as part of that there's a few changes that i'm making uh starting to make to the the system that i have on the wall there of where things are so a few of the containers are starting to get shifted around i've been moving labels uh, just so that everything can have a um, you know a spot that makes sense on the wall and definitely as I've been starting to use my system here, there's things that have been uncovered uh, where it's like, okay, I don't look for particular parts. You know, it doesn't make sense to look for them over here. It would really make more sense if they were grouped with other uh, parts that I use at the same time. So I'll talk more about this system here and the changes that I'm making in a separate video, but I just wanted to highlight doing a lot of work in this corner and trying to move towards taming the floor space in here so that I can, uh, you know, really get to the point of being able to easily access uh, the entirety of my Lego collection. We've got a lot of loose bricks around and as, you know, you work on projects, it's so much easier when things are easy to find and you don't need to, to go digging. And the stuff that I have easily accessible uh, has really made a big difference to being able to uh, to build stuff easily when I want to, and I want to you know make a big push here to get stuff all the way there so that uh, we can enjoy that um, enjoy that system with everything that we have in our collection. And that's really become important here as I've been going through building the, the train modules that I'm working on for the upcoming uh, show that I'm going to be displaying at with uh, the club that I'm a part of. And, you know, as, as is always the case, you know, the more that you try to do stuff with a system, uh, you know, just the clearer it becomes that you know, where the improvements need to be made and the benefits of getting everything converted over to that. 
Now, as I mentioned, I'm getting ready for a uh, train display that I'm participating in at the uh, end of the month, beginning of September. And as part of that, I really needed to give myself more workspace to uh, finish these modules off. And so as part of that, I cleared off the top level of the, uh, the layout here so that I could uh, have some free space that was sufficiently large for these, uh, these modules that I'm working on. And I will talk more about these in an upcoming video. I'll kind of go into each of the modules. But, you know, for now, you can see there's a lot of track ballasting going on, a lot of, a lot of straight track. I've got a, uh, some great switches here uh, that I'm in the process of getting ballasted with some stuff from uh, Trix Bricks, uh, which is working out well. And I'm excited about how that's going to look. We've got a corner module over there. And I actually have, in the other half of the room, I've got a second corner module that's underneath the table over there. And I've also got a, another module under the table over there, which has a grain elevator on it that I'm in the process of building. So, you know, difficult to build big modules like this when you don't have, um, you know, a lot of clear and open space for them. So that is the, that's been the benefit of, you know, getting a few things up on uh, solid wooden surfaces here that I can use for, for building. And the other thing that it really sort of made clear to me is that, uh, you know, I think that once these modules are done, I would like to work at least a few of them into the, uh, you know, our layout here in the basement and sort of, you know, build upon and extend out what we've been doing with the city and the the train yard. And so as part of that, that's why I'm doing some of the reorganization with the, the bookcases and how I'm displaying stuff uh, to try to work a few more of these uh, these modules into uh, into our layout, like especially the the corner modules and the you know the grain elevator i think it'd be awesome to be able to have the grain elevator down on that end of the layout somewhere um and you know as part of that maybe trying to factor in the at least one of these corner modules if not both uh so you know uh it's a work in progress we'll see where i can build things out and uh you know where it makes sense to add those in but I think they're going to look uh, really cool. And I think it would be a shame to just have them either living underneath the tables or, you know, having to be taken apart because I don't have, you know, good storage for them. So we will talk more about that in, uh, in an upcoming video. We'll kind of go in depth through each of these modules and we'll talk about them as they, they come together. But uh, it's getting close to the train show and I want to, you know, push ahead on these modules. So this is going to really free me up to do that. And what you can't see right now in the Lego room, because it's on one of the lower shelves, is I've got some tree prototyping I've been doing. So you're going to get a bunch of trees that are going to start to pop up on these modules. And I've got a few other uh, things in, my, in mind that are going to uh, be worked into these modules as they move towards completion. So definitely stay tuned for some videos talking through that. And I will do a bunch of videos from the actual train show as well, showing uh, how the modules fit into the bigger layout and showcasing some of the other modules that people, uh, other members of the club are bringing and contributing to the layout. So should be a lot of fun. I've also got some interesting things in mind for how I'm going to be transporting the uh, locomotives and train cars to the show. So uh, we'll cover all of that in upcoming videos on the channel. Beyond that, continuing to make progress on the Lego City. We've got a few more buildings that are going to be going up shortly, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, looking forward to 
getting the the tables cleared here and getting the the trains running again and you can see I've got an ever-growing stack of mills modules that are ready to uh, ready to be used here. I'm building to the point I would really like to get the the train tracks all up on mills plates and modules, um, you know, so that we can have a consistent level and um, sort of system around the the entire layout. So that's something that's hard to do. Uh, you know, section by section, it kind of is going to need to be done all at once. So I'm kind of trying to work towards that point where I can do a big, uh, a big push to get everything, uh, everything onto to mills here. And, you know, I think that'll really free us up to for the next phase of working on the, the train yard here. So Continuing to work on mills plates, you'll see a lot of different mills modules working into the layout over the next little while. And beyond that, uh, I've got some exciting sets that I'm uh, working on building from this latest Lego release here. Uh, so definitely keep an eye out. We've got some cool, we got the uh, Sanctum Sanctorum uh, modular that's going to work into the layout and a few other sets that we're going to be reviewing and talking about on the channel. So uh, definitely, uh, if you have not subscribed, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of those upcoming videos. And thank you very much for watching. We will see you again soon. Take care. Bye.